Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I'm your GPR professor and president at BigmanGeophysical.com and today we have me. this Hi. technician, Eliana Bigman, who's going to help me make the video for the quick start guide of the Screening Eagle ProSec GS8000 utility push cart. Uh, and basically this is the entire system. It also has, which we'll show you in another video, um, a GPS that comes with it when you order one of these or rent it or whatever. Uh, and it just sticks right here, right on top of it, and it has the ability to integrate with the GPS. To turn the system on, you can just press this button down here, and that just turns the uh, radar itself on. And then that connects with a iPad. And for the iPad, we're going to use the GS app. So you can see it's a GPR subsurface. She presses it, and it brings up the ProSec. So to get it connected, you have to be signed in number one, and we're obviously signed in under service at Bigman Geophysical. And so she'll click, uh, click probe, and we have to figure out which one that is. And so we have, uh, this has been connected to two different GSs. So every time you connect it, it will, every time you connect it, it'll save that connection in there. And so this specific one is 0038. So go ahead and click the little Wi-Fi icon, Eliana on the 0038, press join. And it should join through a Wi-Fi connection uh, from here. And so there is a little Wi-Fi module down here um, so it can connect wirelessly to the iPad. Usually it takes a second. Hopefully it connects. <laughs> and there it is, it's connected. So you can see right here it says connected and then it gives you all of your uh, information here. If you want to calibrate the survey wheel, then you can just calibrate it from this screen and where it says last odometer calibration. So that was obviously in uh, November uh, 10th and you would calibrate it there. We're not going to calibrate it now. Uh, but this is what the calibration screen looks like. And what you would do is you just lay down a measuring tape on the floor and then you'd push it along that measuring tape and tell the system how far you pushed it. So we'll go ahead and click cancel for now. But that's how you would do it. And, and um, we'll make another video uh, for that. All right, go to home. And now it's ready to start collecting. So if she presses create new, that little icon, well, actually, I'll tell you what. First, if you click, click the data square, you have all your data available to you to review. If you're doing a project, you want to keep all your data in one folder, then you can create your own folder. Click this little folder at the bottom, and we'll do a new folder. Once you press uh, test, okay, how about test video? T E S T V I D E O. Perfect. And now we'll press OK. And now we'll click the test. You can see test video has zero files in it. So click that little thing. And now you can see there's nothing in there. So if we want to start first file, we'll click the little plus button. And it brings us up to our data acquisition screen. Now over here on the left hand, I'm sorry, bleh, the right hand side, you can see we have three options. We have settings, we have interpretations, which is in the middle, and then we have our log book all the way on the right. So in settings, the first before you even get started, you have to make a few choices. In measuring mode, if you click measuring mode, there's three choices. There's line scan, which is gonna be just sort of like a free scan. Um, no GPS or anything like that. You're just gonna kind of collect and mark. Area scan is gonna be an actual grid, and then free path is with a GPS, and it'll uh, allow you to roam around, but geo-reference everything that you have. So we're gonna go line scan. Okay, the next thing, so if you click the little arrow out, the little, yep. The next option that we're gonna have to choose is gonna be optimization mode. So go ahead, click optimization mode. We have two, we have standard or max speed. That's just gonna be basically, um, you know, how, how you wanna collect it. If you need to go really fast or you wanna get better uh, uh, density of data. And that's really the sampling rate. Click the arrow out. All right, repetition rate. You have a few options. We typically go with one inch if we're doing utility locating, but you can go smaller or larger. That's basically saying, 
how often as you push the machine, the instrument, is it going to actually put out a radar pulse? So we'll keep it at one inch because that's standard for utilities, which is typical what people are using it for, although people are using it for quite a few different options. And then units, you can do imperial, which would be feet, or you can do metric, which would be in meters. So we'll keep it as imperial since we're in the U.S. And that's all you have to, choices you have to make to get started, and then everything else you can do uh, while you're scanning. So if you X out of here, and you click the little blue button, the blue button's gonna allow you to start collecting information. So go ahead, click the little blue button, and now it's ready to go. And so if you start to push the GPR, it's starting to collect data. Okay. Now, this won't look like what normal people see when they collect GPR data, but, but you have a few options here. All right? So first of all, to get it to look normal, you can just two-finger swipe up, and now you can get normal-looking data, okay? grayscale. If you want to increase, you, know, you can just uh, do it with your fingers, you know, however you want here, um, to size it the way that you want to size it. This system has two antennas inside of it. They're both step frequency continuous wave. And so you have a high frequency antenna and a low frequency antenna. Okay? So that's showing all of the low frequency. And now that's showing high frequency, you know, down to around what we're estimating to be, I don't know, almost five feet. And then low frequency below five feet. So you can make those adjustments uh, if you want. Usually if we're outside locating utilities, we start with this pretty high up. Um, to look at the lower frequency because it's a broadband and you can really see a lot in this. If we're inside like we are right now on concrete, this is really one of the only push cart systems that I think is reasonably appropriate for investigating concrete and just under concrete. And you can see here because it has a high frequency, um, we're getting really good responses here. Um, you know, kind of just, I don't know, that is maybe a foot or so uh, below below surface. So that looks looks pretty good. All right, so now that we've pushed, if we pull back, you can see that it has a marker to track where you go. So if we stop right here and we bisected the hyperbolic reflection response, then that shows us that, you know, where, where it is. And so technically, that response is between this little marker and the other one on the other side. So it's right in the middle of the GPR, and that's where you would mark that one. If you want to see it in uh, migrated and transformed mode, you just two-finger swipe up, and now it's in migrated and transformed mode. All right? So you can just swipe up, um, you know, to see it in the different modes. The other thing you can do is you can swipe to, from the left to the right, and it'll bring up your uh, A-scan or trace. You can keep that on if you want, or you can uh, turn it off. So to, to adjust the data itself, Eliana, come on in. All right. You can do a few options here. We have gain. So unclick that auto gain. All right. Now that it's unclicked, we can choose how we want to gain it. Obviously, it's way over gained right now. And so there's two, right? So you can swipe, just scroll this up and down. But there's two gains here. If I take these both all the way down, you can see now I don't see anything. That's only for the high frequency. So you have a high frequency option and low frequency, and these both have their own gain functions. Okay, so now they're both off. So you can choose what one you want to deal with and adjust. Okay, so we'll adjust the high frequency here. So Eliana, go ahead. You can start taking the one that says linear gain and move it over a little bit. Okay, stop. And now you can see, as she starts to move that, it starts to adjust the gains from the top down. All right, take the time gain and start adjusting that one. You can see that starts to adjust the gains bottom up. And so what you want to do is get it to a point where you have a reasonably consistent and not overgained uh, data set. And, you know, that's basically what you now see in the, in the uh, high frequency. If we want to adjust the bottom to be consistent with that, Right, then we would go to the bottom. We can adjust the time gain. Okay, and now we have a reasonably consistency from high frequency to low frequency. Um, if we move, continue to scroll down, there's a noise cancellation function. 
So that just will turn noise you know, on or, or off and remove it or not remove it. We'll leave it on. There's a background removal uh, as well that will remove horizontal banding. So if you go ahead and remove that, uh, put that back removal all the way to the right or to the left, sure. Keep it, now let it go. All right, it's gonna bring in, you can see the direct wave now uh, is in here. If she goes all the way to the right, now the direct wave is gone. So it removes all the horizontal stuff. Go ahead. Ooh, Whoa. it's like magic, okay? <laughs> So, you know, we'll go somewhere not too aggressive because if you go too aggressive, you could start removing things you want like the bottom of slab or something like that. There's dielectric, so we can adjust to identify, you know, approximate wave velocity and dielectric constant. So obviously that's too narrow, Whoa. okay? That's too wide. And so we want to get it somewhere that wraps around our hyperbola, something like that, uh, that looks pretty good. And once you have that done, you can actually double check in the migrated inhibitor transform view that you have a dot where your response is. And that's exactly what we have over here now. All right, as we continue to go down, A scan, an envelope. So that's basically, do you want just the green signal? Do you want just the Hibber transformed or envelope? Or do you want to see both? I tend to keep on both, but it's certainly your choice. Um, and so that's it. That's the... Most of it, you can change colors if you want as well, but again, standard is gonna be black and white. Um, and then finally, you can go ahead and you can actually just hold your finger down. You can move it you know, to sort of where the depth is, and then you can tag it as whatever you want. In this case, right, that's gonna actually be a conduit that's underneath our uh, slab over here in our, in our warehouse. You can see all of our equipment for uh, uh, rental and, and, and testing uh, over here. And so the conduit's right under here. And actually, I mean, literally, it's right under here, going through where the uh, GPR is. Uh, and now we tagged it. And so once we save it, you can see it tagged it as a, a red dot, you know, for a conduit. And so once you tag them, if you go back into over here, you can see all of the things that you've done already, uh, all the markers that you've created. In your logbook, right, you can see everything here, and you can go ahead and make any additional comments you want. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, no, put it, and then press done. No, yeah, yeah. See, so it adds any text that you want uh, right into there. So that's the basic functionality of it. And again, this showed on the high frequency sort of how that looks. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll stop this one at this point. We'll go back and we will uh, do one outside uh, as well. All right, so we're outside now and we'll show you sort of what it looks like on the ground uh, when you're trying to locate utilities. Again, inside, inside the warehouse, the high frequency tool on this is excellent. For outside, um, you know, a lot of times this, this lower frequency antenna is going to be great uh, because it has a massive bandwidth, which we'll show you in just a second. But for this next one, you'll see it starts to count up right uh, over here uh, as you sort of do them. So if we go out here and we go back in and we go into our test videos and then we click again. All right. It's going to just keep going up by one number over and over again. So if we press Eliana, go ahead, press play. All right, and if we start to push. You can see it's collecting data and I have our lower frequency on the entire screen, right? That's taking up the entire screen right now. And you can see it did a great job of identifying multiple different targets. So we actually have, and I'll kind of open it up and so it's easy that you can just adjust it with your fingers. But what you can see here is we have a gas, a power, and an abandoned line over here, marked as a power by somebody, but really we think it's the old water. Uh, nonetheless, in the gas, we can go ahead and just drop this in there, click gas and oil, save it, okay, over here. All right, we can call that electric, we can save it, and then over here, we can go ahead and say, I don't know if there's an unknown, but let's see what we can say here. 
uh, we can change it later on, but it's marked as electric. I think it's water. We're going with water. All right, save it. And I can move this around if I want, you know, uh, in any way I feel like. All right, so it's my sort of choice, right? So now we have those marked, um, and and that's it. And so this is this is what we're looking at. Now, if we want to go down, we can always pull this little pill, basically, down. And now I'm looking at high frequency and lower frequency. And if I come in over here, I go back to near field, which is what they call it. I can adjust my gains. And what I have is I have multiple layers in the pavement that I can see. There's at least one, two, three layers in the pavement, okay? Four layers in the pavement. I have a beautiful shot of this gas line now with a little break in the, sub, in, in the bottom of the pavement for the trench. And then, you know, where it gets more difficult to see these other two, I actually can see them beautiful in my low frequency. So a lot of times what we're finding is we're starting sort of, you know, with the low frequency up, seeing what we can see, and then we can sort of peek in underneath with the high frequency and see if we get any additional benefit. Um, so that's that's it in uh, general. Um, if we stop this, and you can see, like, you know, again, you can do uh, different scans. You can do a grid. You can do a free path. And in those cases, you can actually see time slices on the, on the screen. Um, but we'll go ahead and save that for uh, another time. So we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, technician number one over here. We're gonna to try to train her to be able to go in the field someday. I don't know if she's gonna really like it. She seems she gets bored when I talk to her about GPR, but but she did great. So thank you so much. We appreciate everybody. Good luck in the field. If you're interested in renting this piece of equipment or anything else, or you need some training, reach out to us. Our team is here to help you. Our whole business is built on being a support for you, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Subscribe.